Welcome to Nursing School Explain. In this video, in the top 10 most commonly prescribed medications list, which is albuterol. So albuterol is a bronchodilator and it is also in the category of adrenergic medications. So the indications for albuterol is the treatment and prevention of bronchospasm and that mostly applies to patients who have asthma or COPD but we can also use it if the patient is anaphylactic to like a bee sting for example. Action, it binds to beta 2 adrenergic receptors, adrenergic right here, which relaxes the airway smooth muscle and whenever something relaxes, it causes dilation. And in this case, it causes bronchodilation, letting the air flow, flow easier through the patient's lungs. Now, side effects, because it activates the adrenergic, the fight or flight response, it can cause restlessness, nervousness, tremors, and also an increased heart rate, which kind of goes along with this adrenergic response. The patient might also have chest pain and palpitations because <clears throat> of this increased heart rate. It might also cause paradoxical bronchospasm, meaning that now it has the opposite effect. So it's not bronchodilating, but it's actually causing bronchospasm, which will make the patient worse. This is rare, but it can happen if the patient uses it incorrectly or if there might be some sort of a reaction to a preservative that's contained in the inhaler. Another side effect of albuterol is hypokalemia, and that is mostly when it's a repeated use. So if the patient has a really bad COPD or asthma exacerbation, and they need these broncho bronchodilator um, nebulizers administered, let's say every hour or maybe even more frequently to get rid of their shortness of breath. So if we have a lot of albuterol administered in a short period of time, it can cause this hypokalemia. And remember that we measure the potassium in the patient's bloodstream. So that means that the potassium has shifted from the serum into the cell. And that is also the reason why we use albuterol for the treatment of hyperkalemia, because it helps to drive the potassium into the cell and out of the bloodstream and then help um, relieve that hyperkalemia for our patients. Nursing considerations and patient teaching, we want to make sure the patient uses the inhaler correctly. There are spaces available for kids because sometimes it's hard to coordinate the triggering of the inhaler and the inhalation. We also want to teach our patient to call 911 or whatever emergency system if the shortness of breath is unrelieved or if the patient, in addition to having shortness of breath, has diaphoresis, cyanosis, palpitations, or chest pain, because that is a true emergency if they are turning blue and really activating all their kind of like almost like in a shock state. So we want to make sure that emergency response is activated. Um, mouth rinse also helps after use to decrease dry mouth. We want to instruct the patient to clean the mouthpiece at least weekly to prevent any contamination there. And the patients with asthma and COPD, they need frequent follow-ups if they don't get relief from just the albuterol because they might need additional inhalers or other medications to manage their symptoms. And I have a special video that goes over respiratory medications where I explain in detail adrenergic and uh, cholinergic medications as well as other ones that you might see other inhalers that you might see used in the treatment specifically mostly for asthma here thanks for watching and see you soon